world's largest button assortment, games, toys, and more. Formula 350 Collectibles. Dumpsterware.com. Go buy some merch. Warning, the following podcast contains adult language, adult situations, and lots and lots and lots of sexual innuendos. Viewer discretion is advised. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't let any kid listen to this fucking garbage. Welcome to uh, uh, Gassy Radio, your home for gaming, anime, superhero news, and entertainment. Waft in and listen. Here are your hosts, Randy and Luigi. Uh, excuse me. And welcome to a brand new Gas Radio. Sorry for the delay, it's still getting over holiday season. And go fuck yourself. I'm Randy Lee Beasley. I'm sorry, did you say something? I just, um, uh, I did this. <laughs> oh! And it popped God. in Luigi's ear. And, like, you probably uh, heard that a little bit uh, on here, but, yeah, his, uh, his ear just exploded. Yeah, but, I'm uh, Luigi Bonanno. Yes. Oh. Let's get into this shit. When you're feeling low and you want to shoot someone in the face, it's the gaming section. Because you can't do it in real life or to go to jail. Gaming section, man. Um, Pokemon Go developer uh, Niantic. Niantic? Niantic. Niantic. Recently expanded the game's Pokedex with the introduction of Generation 3 Pokemon, which arrived last month as part of the big Pokemon Go update. I've actually been uh, enjoying playing it again. All I'm missing are the two legendaries and, and the fucking regional variants. But the best part is when I was in Florida a couple weeks ago, I got the Heracross mm-hmm. and I got the Corsola, which are Southern American, Southern State variants. No shit. Uh, I do have a second Corsola, so as soon as they implement trading, I can trade you for something. Right, but who knows when that's going to be. Yeah, no shit. Um... Anyway, as with the case with, was with previous Pokemons, some of these monsters can only be encountered in a specific part of the world. Yeah, I just mentioned that. Namely, Zangus and Siviper, which were exclusive to the Americas, Africa, and Europe, Asia, respectively. However, Pokemon has flopped it. Has flip-flopped it now. So now, if you are in America and Africa, you can catch Siviper, and if you're in Europe and Asia, you can catch Zangus. Pretty badass, man. And then they're going to flop it back eventually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see what else do we get. That's actually pretty good. I I like if they did that with the first generation Pokemon. You know, just like rotated them every. Yeah, once they, in a they great did it for generation while. two and generation three. Like they made region. Like we got the fucking uh, not Mister Mime. Who did we catch? I caught Farfetch. Yeah, I, we got the Farfetched, and then. So they did it for generation one, but kind of. They right. didn't. They didn't implement it for Mister Mime over here. Right. What they should do is they should just rotate it every like three right. months. Europe or got Kangaskhan. Right. Uh, we got that, but like. People are still missing shit, and I'm not paying to go fly somewhere to, for some bullshit. Yeah. Um, not unless we're getting paid to do it. Right. Um, we got a new Monster Hunter World trailer and beta announced for PlayStation 4 only. Oh, good shit. That's very entertaining and interesting. Um, I think they said that it's going to be like multiplayer and everything too, right? So you and me could jump on that and kill some monsters. Just fuck yeah, fuck dude. It. Uh, Overwatch's character Mercy was nerfed yet again because she's too strong. And they recently just did sh- they nerfed uh, Boba Fett down in Battlefront Two. Yeah. And um, they made Luke stronger because I I was I kept trying to play as Luke as one of my mains. Yeah. And it's in, just in Galactic Assault and fucking Hero vs Villains and he just sucked. Like Ray yeah. is my favorite. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing a lot of that Ray shit or too. Yoda. Yoda's pretty strong. Starfighter Assault was my favorite. I love throwing people off the fucking edge. Fuck Yoda. Yeah, dude. Boom. <laughs> Starfighter Assault is my favorite fucking game mode on there. I, I beat arcade. You don't like fun mode. You like you like in Call of Duty, man. Like I play I don't the like SCD. Yeah, I, don't I like, do. Well, that's I don't because like the, I was on like the major league circuit. The only ones I don't like are the scenario one and uh, like anything that makes you like do an objective. I'd right. rather just blast people all day. I got you, but like in the like in uh, the t- like in tournaments and shit. Oh god, what the hell was that? Anyway, Luigi's getting his ears raped. Uh, in tournaments and everything, search and destroy, domination, and capture the flag are like the mode. So that's I just grew up playing that way. Cause like right. when we hit the local tournaments and capture shit, the flag, I've started growing to love. But yeah, like if you're ever on my team in a tournament, you've got to get used to S and D uh, and domination. But um, anyway, we'll we'll fucking we'll do that shit. Cause I was playing that, but I've been playing a lot of Batman. The t- the tail. I the saw tale. that. I've been playing so much of that. It's usually it's it's been overcooked on the Switch and then Mario on the Switch and then Batman and fucking right. Battlefront and Wolfenstein. I like it. I just haven't played it since like the second time I played it. If you guys have seen on Gassy Radio, there's 
I also brought back the Mirror's Edge. I only have a couple more things to do before I beat that game, and I can delete oh, it. Oh, I got a, I got, I got a lot more to do. Um, I think I'm only like ten minutes into the game. Mirror's Edge two. Yeah, it's fucking good. Um, I'm exaggerating. I'm, I'm more like two, three hours in, but still, like, there's a lot of shit to do in that game. The original Battlefront two, non EA, just got an update after twelve years. It was a firmware update, so people could still play no, online. Shit. But it's yeah, twelve years it took for that update. But people still play online. Yeah, they do. But it's just a firmware update. It makes everything run a little bit smoother. I can't and believe it that people still. There are diehard fans who boycott EA and won't even get the new games. And those are the fans that ruin Star Wars. But anyway, it's. Yeah. Um, and then what else, man? Uh, last thing I got now, we're closer to Dragon Ball Fighters. Fuck yes. Yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about the game. I didn't get a chance to get into the open beta. I, I was going through some shit this weekend. The beta had some issues, like you would lose, like, a ma like the match would just cut out on you, but neither of you were getting, you never got a penalty. Um, laggy at times, but that's part what a beta is. Right. Other than that, it was fucking gorgeous. Yeah, they were saying there were some like connection issues and stuff, yeah. and they were talking about prolonging it, and then they decided they no. didn't. They didn't prolong it. No, the last time I played was yesterday. Uh, yeah, I went to play this morning, and oh, please, you purchased the like. It was like the game screen popped up. Purchase game and all that right. shit. But I already pre-ordered. I got uh, Luigi the Day One Edition, and I got the Fighter Day One Edition, and we're fucking already done it. Oh, yeah. We're just waiting. Um, so yeah, but ah. Uh, the, the combos were fun, the characters are fun, the animations are fun. The dialogue is just fucking... Go ahead. The dialogue is just fucking great and fun. Like, the, yeah. the banter between people, even after you lose, like, they know which character is fighting, and they know if they're fighting themselves. It's so fucking good, dude. That's great. Um, it's the fighting... It's the Dragon Ball fighting game we've been wanting. It's an actual, like... Oh, not just like a fucking like, like Xenoverse sucked. The only thing that you told me that I didn't like about this game is that you can't transform. Right, like that. but they they told us that when they like since they announced the I game, know, so you I can't didn't... get yourself pumped for that. And we've already known it's not going to happen, but it doesn't matter. That's the only thing I'm upset. It's about. still pretty badass. Um, certain moves cause transformations. It's so fucking good. It reminds me of Super Budokan for the fucking SNES and the fucking. Uh, the Game Gear, like, that's how it's bringing it back, but it's so good, it's so flawless, dude, once you play, you're gonna be like, oh god, you won't be able to stop, it's like crack. Yeah, like a big fucking, shut up, dude. Didn't I shoot his dick off? No, I'm back, I'm just chilling. I have crack. Then, did you learn your lesson? For now. Yeah, I still got the gun, bro. Like I said, I'm just doing crack. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not fucking with anybody. I just like my crack. Okay, come on to see everybody. Welcome back. Um, I don't even know what I was going to say. Oh, the Elder Scrolls Online just added undead dragons. Zombie dragons. Cool. That's all I got. Because we're kind of not... We're not in a rush, per se. But... We're in a rush. Yeah. <laughs> Anime. Animated. Assholes? Possibly. Oh, I think it's everything like that and all rolled up into one fat fucking blunt. We're in the anime section, man. Give and me my fucking seven deadly sins, you sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> we got <laughs> speaking, we got Netflix has released the Godzilla King of Monsters anime trailer. Ooh. I my my wiener's kinda tingly for that, man. Uh the girls last tour manga just ended. Manga, whatever you want to call whatever. it. Whatever. I get made fun of either way. It has ended. Uh, Sword Art Online, Fatal Bullet has been announced. Yeah, yeah, that was announced a while back. I'm actually really excited for that because it actually takes place with uh, GGC as opposed to... Um, as, yeah. As what? He was like, yeah. Sword Art Online, yeah. As, or... Whatever it is. Did Iron you Dragon. take um, some of my crack? Alright. <laughs> uh, Magic Girls. I am not high on crack. Sight Anime <laughs> is to get 12 episodes produced. What? Magic Girls. Sight Anime is to get 12 episodes produced. Cool. No tables are not available. Sorry, I just read a fucking message to Mighty Con out loud. 
Comedian Patrick Harlan is to guest star on Sazesan. Sazesan. It's like a super famous like sitcom anime in uh, Japan, and like no, one sure. of our comedians is going over there to fucking guest voice on it. That's funny. I hope he can speak Japanese. We are getting a new. Arigato, Mr. Rubato. <laughs> we are sushi. We are <laughs> <laughs> we are getting a new Back to the Future comic. That is dealing in Doc's point of view from the moment Marty leaves on the train and he rescues Clara. And um, it's going to chronicle what happens between then, since he does tell Marty when he comes back to say goodbye to him and Jennifer, that they've been on many adventures already, and of course they have kids. Uh, it's going to chronicle all those adventures, man. Oh, that's and cool. that's going to be fucking pretty cool. You know, it's anime, it's comic. Right. In the gray area, but that's still some cool news, man. Uh, and it will catch us back up with Marty in the end of part three. Uh, Dragon Ball Super, English review. We still have the original Ocean Dubs Vegeta playing the voice of the uh, <clears throat> false Vegeta. And oh, Vegeta's... did you hear about um, Vegeta calling out, uh, the voice of Vegeta calling out oh, the yeah, voice Oh yeah, dude, Goku? I've been sharing that shit. Oh, oh my god, I can't we'll, wait. We'll get to that, hold on. Um, so anyway, Dragon Ball Super, it's the original, uh, the real Vegeta, Christopher Sabat, is just standing there vanishing while Goku fights the fake Vegeta. But like, Vegeta doesn't want to have his clone self lose to Goku, so it's it's fun, it's funny, it's it's neat, and the fact that the dude who originally voiced the it's over nine thousand thing is playing right. the voice, uh, Brian Drummond, uh, and yes, uh, Christopher Sy uh Goku, Sean Chamel, fuck with his Vegeta figures, and then yeah, they they called each other. I I shared that I think I shared it on Gas, but I shared it on my Facebook page, and I said I, I call winner. <laughs> Because I will fucking play yes. the winner of whoever Lucky wins that. Yes. And then put a couple grand on the line. Those motherfuckers can afford it. <laughs> um, no, but it's really funny because fucking Sean Shamil on the, la the last video, he pulled out his fucking battle trumpet and called on the battle <laughs> trumpet. Oh, my God. Like, I'm going to watch that shit live. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Because Sean's a gamer. And Text me when it's going down. And Sabbath, I'll add you to the event. Fuck yeah, dude. And Sabbath plays games, but he's very private. He doesn't... Dream or do Twitch or anything, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun fight to watch, man. I know it's all for fun, but like it's so funny. Right. Um, this is the closest we can get to actually have them fighting. Uh, In real life. Right? Yeah. Uh, the Dragon Ball Super Japanese review. Uh, Vegeta goes limit break. Super Saiyan Blue. Super Saiyan. It's sparkly, and a more dark blue than Super Saiyan Blue. He's stronger at Goku until. Until Goku can fucking go Ultra Instinct, full power, Vegeta's stronger right now. And Jiren was, is just like, no, I want to fight Goku. And every time he fucking presses that Goku button, it pisses Vegeta off even more. Right. But, um, and doesn't he still go after Jiren and Jiren still whoops his ass? Vegeta gets a couple shots in. It's similar to when, I'm calling it Super Vegeta Blue. Because it's so similar to when he went Super Vegeta against Cell. Like, even okay. him punching him in the stomach. It's so similar. It's definitely a throwback. Okay. Um, but it's good. Uh, Frieza's fighting Dispo. And uh, the next episode, Gohan is going to make his thing, but I think he's going to be eliminated. Yeah. He's going to fight Dispo, too. And then all this other shit's happening, but we're getting to the end. Which yeah. we know is going to be Goku versus Jiren. And I'm not scared. Well, they said that somebody is, like, hiding in the midst. And uh, there's only two universes left. There's only uh, the three people in Eleven, uh, then Frieza, Goku, 16, or not 16, uh, 17. And it's only, there's no one hiding. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that, that, nothing came from that. Um, I don't know. But I'm not worried about if Jiren wins, because if Jiren wins, he's still a pride trooper. He, I think he's going to bring back all the universes that were destroyed. And you'll have respect for Goku. And like I said before, that will be the next arc is, oh, there was a universe, you were very specific, there was a universe that was destroyed for a reason, and now this ancient evil fucking force is going to be right. unleashed. And I think that, I don't think we'll ever get to Goku having to kill Beerus. I think Beerus will be killed. I really do. Um... I don't... Because the voice actor for Beerus kind of let something spill before he deleted the tweet. He kind of he kind of made it clear that you don't have to look at Beerus as a villain. And essentially, 
that's kind of where the fucking the next there's something hiding in the mist is coming. Okay. But yeah, that was deleted. Okay. Because you know they're recording way ahead and they know way ahead, but right. Oh, who knows? All we you know, fucking Cell will come back, which would have, I would have much rather seen Cell come back than oh, Frieza yeah. again. But we've already said that. But I think Cell would have immediately tried killing Goku again. Probably. Yeah, man. Um, I talked about it a little bit. Uh, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse trailer two was released. It looks neat. Um, yeah, it looks okay. Uh, the animation is a little choppy. Like legitimately in the trailers, it's choppy. When we saw when, we, when you and Dave saw Star Wars, the trailer was played and it looked choppy. Like yeah, I, I guess that's what they're going for. But whatever. And that is a good segue. You know, anime superhero into the superhero section. Man, let's got anything else. Hi, I'm Robocop Batman, and you're listening to the superhero section. Who has a feather in my ass? Stop that. We're in the superhero section, and I did not pull up the notes, man. But, um, yeah, uh, Stan Lee is now being accused of the bullshit of uh, the former nursing company that he has that he got rid of recently, that he would tell them to, like, suck him off and all this other crazy what shit. What the fuck? Yep. But here's the thing that makes me think, besides the fact that it's Stan fucking Lee, and his wife just died, and everyone knows how much he loved his wife, the fucking nursing company would not release its name, and we still don't know which one it is, except for we can point and be like, okay, well, he just fucking right. let go of one. The same time he let go of one of the previous nursing company is when he found out and this is how rich this motherfucker is when his lawyers and attorneys just did like an audit of what he has they found that someone bought a condo in his name and stole like eight hundred thousand dollars wrote a check for eight hundred thousand dollars in his name and just took the money and he wouldn't have known unless like they did their annual checkup that's how much money this guy has. It's so it's just funny uh, when he finds out people stole money from him and bought condos from him that all of a sudden, this fucking nursing home place is like, oh, he's trying to diddle people and grow stuff. I think right. it's bullshit. Yeah, I think it's bullshit, I think too. it's far-fetched bullshit. Very. Um, I can't see Stan Lee doing yeah, that. Yeah, no, not Stan Lee, man. There's certain people you can be like, yeah, I probably did that. Right. No, I doubt that. Like Weinstein? Yes, you could totally see that exactly. motherfucker chokes on his own shit. Man, man, man. Um... Chris Hemworth has fulfilled his Marvel contract, but unlike Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans, he wants more. Chris Hemsworth is also significantly younger than a Robert Downey Jr. Right. And fucking, he's up for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be hey. up for it too, man. Why the fuck not? I'm down to see so uh, Thor kick some more ass. Me too, dude. Ghost Rider 2 core director, co-director, wow, well, sorry, co-director, uh, Brian Taylor, is bored with the Marvel movie. The Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance co-director Brian Taylor stated, The Marvel Studios movies, ugh, I just don't understand at all. I have to be honest, they seem very long to me. I've got to be careful the way I say this, I just don't get them. I'm kind of bored with them, and I just don't find them particularly entertaining. I think they're really well made in terms of craft, the action is really good. They're technically great, but everything is just a rehash. They have a lot of the actors that I love, but I just don't get it. End quote. Uh, it's all one big giant continuation. Right. <laughs> How so not to get? But anyway, he doesn't like it. Eh? Uh, he's never been asked back to direct a Marvel movie anyway. So. Maybe he's just a little butter. Salty. Put some salt on the crackers. Salty. <laughs> <laughs> um, Doctor Doom and other pre-buyout Fox Marvel movies are apparently still happening. Yeah, like Deadpool. Well, not no, not just that, but like ones that we really didn't have faith in to begin with are still happening. That's essentially where this quote is coming from. Like, they couldn't handle Fantastic Four at all, especially with the crap reboot one we don't speak of. It's like Voldemort. We don't mention its name. So they're going to give us a Doctor Doom movie. We'll see. But I did get the news that Tom Holland will be in the Venom movie with Tom Hardy. Yeah. So that's fucking badass. Because yeah. that's already looking badass. He's a great... I can't wait. Tom, uh, let's see here. Bane himself. Fucking Tom Hardy... Or Topher Grace from that '70s show. Who's a better Eddie Brock Venom? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's a joke yeah. because fuck that fucking Spider-Man Three bullshit. I mean, yeah. 
And that was just that was the studio. Sam Raimi did not want him to play Eddie Brock and Venom. The studio was like, we need a fucking new name, someone who's popular right now with the kid. And that's why there was never a Sam Raimi Spider Man four because he said, "Fuck this shit." Got out why the kid was kind of good. So I don't right. Know. Yeah. This is a joke. Speaking of jokes, Lindsay Lohan wants to play Batgirl in Josh Whedon's Batgirl film. She's campaigning hard for it too. No. Yep. Just I swear to God that's just. No. Yeah. Uh, Fuck, she do. No. She, Mike Crack is already gone. You just mentioned her name. I'm well aware. It ain't no joke. I, I agree, yeah. Herman. Um, that's all I got for hero section, man. Um, well, I say no to Lindsay Lohan. Big time. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude. Yeah. Actually, I have the perfect bad girl in mind. Emma Stone? No. Um, she's the chick that plays Claire on Shadowhunters on MTV. She, she'd Catherine be good. Something. She'd be good. I mean, all she oh, has yeah. to do is dye her hair. No, she's a redhead. Uh, like a fucking, like she, the Batgirl redhead that we need? Uh, yeah. Here, let me show you a picture real quick. But anyway, man, we're gonna, we're gonna switch it over. He's gonna show me a picture and we're gonna finish this shit, son. Matter of fact... The unboxings are back. Unboxing with Tommy is coming up right now. We're unboxing the first wave, which is just two figures, of the Stranger Things figures. Hubert. Yeah, see? Especially getting shot and put in a wheelchair. But anyway, yeah, exactly. here's the Stranger Things wave one, which is just two figures. Unboxing with Tommy, and then, of course, we'll be back into the entertainment section. It's Unboxing with Tommy! Whoa, it's looking shabby in here. Nice and clean in the office. How's it going? Welcome to a brand new Unboxing with Tommy the Puppet. And I'm a demon. Yee-hoo! We're unboxing Stranger Things. Preview, if you will, of Wave 1. Eleven and Hopper. Chief Hopper and Eleven from Season 1. And coming soon in 2018. Hell yeah, we're getting Dustin, Lucas, Mike, Will, and the Demigorgon. And I'm pretty sure the Demigorgon's Target exclusive. I could be wrong. And that's it for Wave 1. And then when, you know, we'll clearly do another unboxing when we get these guys. And then when we move on. I'm sure Wave 2 will be like Barb and Jonathan and Nancy and Steve and uh, Winona Ryder's character, Joyce. It's going to be a good one. Let's open them up and see the accessories. Hopper comes with his gun. You can put in his hand. Or in his holster. And of course, he comes with his coffee mug. And we got Eleven um, from Season 1. The Bloody Nose. I have her hand out doing her powers or whatever. You can uh, attach a hand to the walkie-talkie and put and change out hands. So she can be talking to Mike and the other boys on the walkie-talkie. You can detach the other hand and put the uh, Ego hand in the hand. So she's eating the Ego. And she also has her disguise wig. Pretty badass figures. I'm looking forward to seeing the four boys and what accessories they come with and all that other good shit in the Demi Gorgon. And yeah, man, uh, take it back to the puppet and then back to the show. And we hope you like the unboxing with Tommy's return with the Stranger Things characters. Back to the episode. Fat fuck! Ah, yes. Welcome to the entertainment section. They brought me to the final section in there. Great. Fuck you guys. Enjoy the entertainment, assholes. Entertainment section's back. We just had a brand new episode of Unboxing with Tommy, Stranger Things, Chief Hopper, and Eleven. More figures are coming soon, and you know I'm a klepto. Well, not a klepto, that's a thief. Yeah, I'll have to get them. Anyway, uh, this is the obituary section right now. Rest in peace to Cranberry's lead singer, Dolores Ordidian. She's dead at 46. No information or news on why or how yet, but unfortunately, unless she had medical problems... She is a rock star, and usually it's drugs or an overdose yeah. or who knows. Uh, but I don't want to be that person and be an asshole. But if we'll see what All happens. Right. Rest in peace. I love that band. Zombie, she's a zombie. No, just, just, just keep going. You know I'm gonna say something horrible. I know. Keep going. I know. <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, I think I cuffed up my liver. Okay. Um. <sighs> Jerry Van Dyke, the comedian and brother of Dick Van Dyke, has also passed away. But he was an older gentleman, like 90-something. So oh, well then he lived, lived a good long, life. Yep. good life. Let's still rest in peace. Now this is a fucked up one. Steven Spielberg's personal driver killed his entire family than himself. 
That, that's a fuck. That, that's not a fuck in your mouth. I don't know what else is. Um, Steven, how hard do you push your drivers, man? Yeah, no shit. What the fuck? <laughs> he wouldn't read my script. <laughs> oh, boom, God, boom, yeah, boom, 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 boom. Flight of the Concords is returning this year. It's been a couple of years since we got a last season. Uh, I don't give a fuck about that show, but it's good to know that some things don't die. <laughs> Never mind. Bad joke averted. I'm not gonna right, go there. Right, don't do it. Um, we don't want to be the next Logan Paul. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Madman Star, uh, the chick who played his uh, Don's daughter, Don Draper's daughter, uh, Kieran Shaparka, has been cast as Sabrina in the new Sabrina the Teenage Witch show, and it works. It's very mm -hmm. good. Very very excited good for show. that. Uh, Netflix trailers for Game Over Man with the people behind Workaholics, fucking. Hilarious. Watch the trailer, tell me that's not us, and then get pumped for the movie. Um, fuck yeah. And then finally, to end this, can't go too crazy because I only got 30 minutes left before I have to leave and do all their stuff, but quick mini Star Wars review. But instead of a review, give me five things you didn't like about it, and I'll do the uh, same. All right. Five things I didn't like. Let me just give you my number one first. Are we doing full spoiler? Yeah, for, full spoilers. If you don't want to do it, just click around until you see the gassy logo instead of the entertainment section logo. Um, I'll do one, you do one. All right. But top five things I didn't like. Or I would have done differently. Either or. Right. Um, I would have had Luke raise the fucking X-Wing out of the water like in Dagobah, like on episode five. I would have still had the Yoda scene... But I would have had Luke, I guess this is my number one, I would have had Luke actually go to crate, And in order to him to get there, I would have, I wanted to see him. Exactly. Ra raise the fucking neck, because they show you the X-Wing briefly when Ray is standing on the right. cliff. And I'm, I told my wife, I'm like, oh my god, he's going to fucking raise it up out of the water. It's a callback. It's going to be the last, you know, his end journey, he's going to go. And I was like, he's going to fucking die. And my wife's like, shut up, you fucking, this new movie, shut up. And, um, and then the second time I saw it, I was literally fucking sitting there and I was talking to myself because I didn't want to annoy the people I was with. And then the third time, um, Dave was kind of like in his corner thing. Right. And you haven't seen it yet so I didn't want to do what I did the first time with other right. people around me with Bill Bailey and Amber. But it totally should have happened. What's your number one? That was my number one. My number one was how Luke died. Oh, like... Since he projected himself across the galaxy, right. took his toll. Yeah, right. Like that. It needed to be Kylo. Right. It needed like, to be Kylo yes. striking him down so that he could come back better than before. Right. And he used the line and everything, but then he wasn't there. He only used himself as a distraction. And if he was that nimble, he could have done it himself while he was fucking over there. Right. My number two. His number one was was a combo of Luke actually being on crate, and um, just the way that he died, like just overexpending himself and then being brought out into the force like that. I thought it it was poetic and how the story right. was set up, but yeah, no, it was right. It I was it was it like too poetic. It was I like, would have had him die right. on crate, and then my number one thing was Digable. So my number what was a mix. So my number I'll say my number three thing would be. Okay, so number one, he should have raised the X-Wing. Number two, he should have been on crate. Number three, I don't understand why he had the blue lightsaber when he was projecting himself. I understand it was to make Kylo mad or whatever, because that's what Ryan Johnson said. But wouldn't he have projected himself with the green lightsaber Kylo thought he tried to kill him with? Right. That should have been there. I don't get the whole blue right. thing. Kylo um, saw it fucking split watch, and explode. Watch when it gets to, uh, to us on DVD and Blu-ray. It's Changed. green. <laughs> like, that was kind of shitty. Like, yeah, that was... I that was like cool. when they showed his green lightsaber, and then Kylo thinks Luke was just trying to kill him, but then Luke said, you know, for a brief period, like a couple seconds, he wasn't going to kill him because he sensed the dark side that was in him because of Snoke, and it scared him. But he shut off his lightsaber... Or, or, like, before he shut it off, Kylo saw him, and it looked like, you know, and that's the whole thing. But, like, it should have been green when he fought Kylo. Right. Because it made no right. sense, because if Kylo was just, like, I understand he was enraged, but if Kylo was, like, right in the beginning when he was, like, I destroyed that lightsaber, like, an hour or two ago. How do you have that lightsaber? Force choke. Oh, I can't force. Okay, blow up the base. He's not really here. 
Like, right. that's a big little thing for me. What is your number two and three? Do two and three. Uh, that you would have you would have done differently or didn't like. Uh, his training of Ray. I didn't <laughs> like that at all. He should have been more like Yoda. Right. And I feel like he was too butthurt about the past that, like, it, it stopped him from being a te the teacher that we needed for this movie. So those are my two and three. The fact that he didn't train Ray at all and the fact that he, he was butthurt off. Yeah. Like, he was like fucking, no, I will not train you. No, no, That's no. That's Mark okay. Hamill said he didn't like. Mark Hamill legitimately told the director in the beginning. I fundamentally disagree with everything you have set out Luke to do in this movie. Right. And that's when I... Here's my number four. Um, when Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill, tells you, I disagree with everything you're having Luke do in this. Some of the ideas are there, but Luke does not give up. He doesn't quit. You fucking listen to Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill. Right. Uh, Luke should not... Luke should have been on that planet waiting for someone to rise in the light. And when he met Rey, that should have been his spark of hope to actually rejoin the fight and actually right. take down Snoke. That's my number four. Go ahead. Um, let's see, what other problems do I have? The forced romance with Rose and Finn? Uh, you yeah, were the that, big ones that we love. Dude, you fucking, you've known him yeah, for Yeah, that was days. a big one. That was a big one. I didn't like that. And then I especially didn't like the way that Snoke died. That was unexpected. That I'm okay with because I don't know if he's actually dead or if that was he, no, he's dead. But like, well, what he is, it was actually his full vessel. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still no, think there's he, something. No, he killed there. him, and then I know fucking Kylo took over. So I mean, I Snoke's think dead. there's more to it because like, you're not gonna just have Kylo and Rey fighting. I don't know. We'll see. But I like that part. Uh, so let's just let's do uh, my number five. Whatever we've we've done it. Let's do the things right. we like now. I like how a lot of people bitch about it. I like how the fucking daughter of Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, saved herself in the Force. I loved that scene. I thought it was badass, and I thought I did too. My only problem with that was it was a little too um, out of nowhere. I agree a little bit that it was a surprise, but unfortunately Disney doesn't use the the, the novels, um, the expanding universe anymore. It's called Legends now. She was totally a badass in those books, and like you okay. would have expecting it. So like from that point of view, I'm like, okay, yeah, she's she trained herself. She she has the force. She used it a little bit in the older movies. It's just I was right. like, would it have been a nice way to write Carrie Fisher out? Probably a little bit. I just think. Right. I just think episode eight or nine will pick up like five years after the last one, and she'll be she had passed on. Right, but like I don't I don't something. like that because that's not how uh, four, five, and six went. Like it was it was all immediate. Like things were happening around them. Well, episode five takes place two years, uh, sorry, three years after A New Hope. Oh, it does. And Return of the Jedi takes place one year after Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Um. Episode 8 was the first movie. Like, Episode 1... Uh, episode 2 takes place 10 years after Episode 1. And then Episode 3 takes place 3 years after Episode 2. This was the first movie that was, like, maybe a month. Like, or no, I'm sorry, a couple days since you see everyone celebrating at Starkiller Base. Right. Ray meeting, and then them having to leave. Like, this is the first one that's almost a continu direct continuation so, the best way to honor her would be just, you know, reference it, and at the end, maybe you can hear Carrie Fisher say, the Force will be with you always, or something, right. and then, if you wanted to, because they have permission to, maybe do a little Force ghost thing, when Rey, right. I, I'm predicting that Rey starts a new Jedi Temple in the end of um, Episode 9. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Especially if they want to do another trilogy? Well, Ryan Johnson's already hard at work at his. I think that would tie into it. I don't know if we'll have Rey... But it might just be a jump ahead. What if they fucking put nine as she's already started it? I think that because it just... did show the books really quickly before the end of the movie. Right, and that's why Yoda was okay with letting the tree burn because he knew the books were actually gone. Right. Um. I don't know. I I would like to see it end with her knighting somebody or 
the first Jedi Knight of her order has been crowned. Luke's Force Ghost um, is there or watching Or showing her, like, the end of their training with Rey and then them being knighted or something. Right. And I would like to see Luke's Force Ghost and Yoda looking on. Maybe a brief Kenobi appearance. And then, like, like I said, she sees the Force Ghost and smiles and then she hears Leia because she wasn't as strong as them or whatever. Or right. either she hears it and, like, Luke and everyone look on and, like... Right. He gives her a quick line or something, or just looks on. Similar to End of Return of the Jedi, that's how I think it should end. Because it's not really truly over, that's just the So they're just going to kill Carrie Fisher off, they like, off to. screen. Because if you just have her alive somewhere, off in the distance, it's not going it to, it doesn't, it doesn't do justice. Well, if they got permission, they might show her blow up in, in a spacecraft, like saving her, trying to save her people, or something, something, something similar to what we saw in this movie. But she didn't. She they, doesn't make it this time. They're they're either gonna reference her still being alive, but never you never see her, or that she'll have passed in between right. movies because showing her below would be fucked up. Right. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, I, besides the Carrie Fisher thing, I, that's I, I like that. And unfortunately, we'll talk more about Star Wars next week because I gotta. Yeah. Keep going, man. But that was badass. Unboxing's was. back. Gassy's back, man. We're, we're getting shit done, man. This has been Randy Lee Beasley. And Luigi Banana. Eat all the hemorrhoids out of Mama June's ass and take it away, Darren. You've been listening to uh, uh, Gassy Radio. Uh.